Okay, so in our final video on um, data analysis and the second video on deseasonalizing data or certainly working with data that has seasonality, um, we want to have a look at how do we forecast um, when we have data that has seasonality. And the issue is that um, we usually want to use our trend line, our least squares regression line to make forecasts. But when the data has seasonality, the least squares regression line is not actually a good fit for the data because the data is fluctuating around so much. Um, and therefore, particularly on days where we have peaks or troughs, um, the forecast based on the least squares regression line won't be good. So what we want to be able to do is, we talked in the previous video about how we de-seasonalise the data. And we use seasonal indices and we divide the data by the seasonal indices. And what happens is we create a new data set of de-seasonalised data, which doesn't have, has hardly any of the fluctuation of the original data set. Um, and so then what we want to do is fit a trend line. So in this graph here, we're seeing um, the same data we used in the previous video. Um, we have the original rainfall data, we then de-seasonalise that data, which is drawn in black, um, and then we have fitted a trend line to the de-seasonalised rainfall data, so the black data. And so we've got that blue line, which is a pretty good fit for the black data, but it's not a very good fit for the red data. So we want to use the trend line to make predictions for the de-seasonalised data, and then we will re-seasonalise the prediction after that. Okay, so um, I've calculated the trend line, so the equation of the blue line, the de-seasonal, because it's based on de-seasonalised data, it's not just rainfall equals, it's de-seasonalised rainfall, is 105.2 plus 1.516 multiplied by 19. Um, uh, sorry, and that's if we're making a prediction for winter of 2010, which would be season 19 using this particular code. Okay, so if we think about that, we're going to have... Um, Spring in 2009 is uh, season 16, so 17 would be summer in 2010, 18 would be um, autumn in 2010, and 19 would be winter in 2010. So we're using season 19, we're substituting that into our least squares regression equation, which was calculated higher up there, and we find that it predicts that the de-seasonalised rainfall in winter will be 134.053. So then we need to use the fact how the um, formula we use for re-seasonalising the data. So we know that the actual figure is the de-seasonalised figure multiplied by the seasonal index. And if we return to our um, previous video, we calculated the seasonal index for winter for the rainfall to be 1.230. And so therefore, taking our, sorry, de-seasonalised prediction, multiplying it by the seasonal index to re-seasonalise it, we find that the actual predicted rainfall is 165 millimetres. So not 134 millimetres, which is what we get out of the equation. Okay, we need to re-seasonalise the prediction in order to make the forecast. So we can predict that the rainfall in winter of 2010 would be 165 millimetres. In terms of the reliability of that prediction, that would come back to your coefficient of determination, how strong the correlation is, but also whether you're extrapolating or interpolating. And now this is an extrapolation, but it's not a long way out of the data set. So provided that we had a um, strong correlation coefficient, a strong coefficient of determination, we could probably still say that this is a reasonably re reliable prediction. Use the above model to predict the rainfall to the nearest millimetre in summer of 2011. Okay, we're going to need our summer seasonal index. So we're going to need to go back to um, page 99 of your green booklet where you had that previously. I'm just going to pause the video while I go back and get that. Okay, so the summer seasonal index was 0.952. We calculated that in the previous video. And so we want to use the above model to predict the rainfall to the nearest millimetre in summer of 2011. Okay, so we need to first of all work out um, what is the uh, season number for summer of 2011. So winter of 2010 is 19. So season 20 will be spring of 2010. Season 21 will be um, summer of 2011. Uh, so that's where we're up to, so 21, so season 21. Okay, so this means that the it is season 21, so we're going to substitute 21 into the equation. So we know that the de-seasonalised rainfall, 
for summer of 2011 will be one sorry 105.2 plus 1.516 multiplied by 21 um, so that's just using the regression equation so NACAS 105.2 plus 1.516 multiplied by 21 Um, and so that is 137.036 is the deseasonalized rainfall. And so that means that the actual rainfall for summer of 2011 is going to be the deseasonalized rainfall, 137.036, multiplied by the seasonal index, which is 0.952 for summer. So taking that value in my CAS and multiplying it by 0.952, we get actual rainfall and we want to the nearest millimetre, so that rounds to 130 millimetres in summer of 2011. Okay, so example two, sorry, example two. Following table gives the deseasonalized figures and the corresponding seasonal indices for umbrella sales. So we've got, um, Umbrella sales in a particular year doesn't tell us what year. We've got them on a monthly basis. We've also been given the seasonal indices for umbrella sales. So part A, calculate the seasonal index for May and interpret the seasonal index in relation to the seasonal average of the umbrella sales. Okay, so we know that they should all add up to 12. So we can work out the seasonal index for May. Okay, so the May seasonal index, we're going to add up the seasonal indices we have. They are 1.15 plus 0.9, plus 0.2, plus 0.2, plus 0.45, plus 3, big umbrella sales in July, plus 2.10, plus uh, 2.15, plus 0.95, plus 0.4, plus 0.15. Okay, so they add up to 11.65. They should all add up to 12. So that means that May must be 12 minus that. So the May seasonal index is 0 0.35. We simply just made sure that's just making sure that they all add up to 12. Interpret the seasonal index in relation to the seasonal average of the umbrella sales. Okay, so this means in May, um, um, we, um, Let's say in May, sales are predicted. Sorry, can't spell today. All right, predicted to be um, thirty-five percent of the average monthly sales. Or we might say sixty-five percent less. than sales in an average month. So we hardly sell any umbrellas in May compared to um, other months. Basically, it's a very low seasonal index. By considering the seasonal indices and the implications for umbrella sales, determine the wettest and driest months. Okay, so we're looking for the lowest seasonal index for the driest month, um, because that means the umbrella sales are lowest. Okay, so December is the lowest umbrella sales. December has lowest umbrella sales. Oops, sorry. Umbrella sales. That's with our seasonal index of 0 0.15. It's only 15% of an average month. So that implies that it is the driest month. So the driest month is December, and the highest um, seasonal index is in July. July has highest umbrella sales. Which is indicated by the seasonal index of three. That's three times an average month, 200% increase. Um, and so that means that certainly suggests that July is the wettest month. 
If five umbrellas were sold in March, calculate the deseasonalized value for March. Okay, so March, let's look at March. So we've got the seasonalized, the seasonal index for March and we've got the actual umbrella sales. So this is actual, we've got the seasonal index is 0.2 and so we want the deseasonalized sales. Okay, so we know that the deseasonalized sales for March is going to be the actual sales for March which is 5 divided by the seasonal index for March which is 0 0.2. 5 divided by 0 0.2 is 25 so dividing something by a number smaller than 1 will make it bigger it's 5 divided by 1 fifth which is 5 times 5 so it's 25. So we would expect the deseasonalized apologies umbrella sales to be uh, 25 so that's this missing value up here in the table. Calculate the actual numbers of umbrellas sold in September. Okay so the actual sales in September is going to be the deseasonalized sales we can get that from the table which is 30 multiplied by the seasonal index which is 2.15 so 30 times 2.15 so 64.5 umbrellas okay but obviously we can't have half an umbrella so rounding to the nearest umbrella so 65 umbrellas find the equation of the trend line for the deseasonalized data using the least squares regression give values correct to two decimal places code the seasons so that january is month one february is month two etc etc okay so we need to first of all enter in our data um, for the deseasonalized data. So we're going to be using um, season code. So times January is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So um, inserting a data and statistics page, sorry, a list and spreadsheets page, first of all. Um, so we're going to have month or season. They call it month if it's actually a month. Month and um, deseasonalized sales. I'm going to call it D sales just to be clear that it's not the actual sales in my own mind. Okay so we put the data in we're going to have one two three four five okay and then we put the deseasonalized uh, data into the second column so deseasonalized January sales are 24 24, 25, 26, 25. So we see the numbers are all very similar. That's because that's what deseasonalizing does. It reduces the fluctuations. Um, 27, 27, we're up to 28, 30, 31, 33, and 34. Okay, so we've got our data entered in. We want our least squares regression line, so menu 414. Um, our X list is going to be the time, so that's going to be months. So in time series data, time is always the explanatory variable. And our deseasonalized sales is the response variable. Um, the regression equation is being saved as function one. Results are going in column C. Okay. All right, so if we scroll back up to the top here so we can see, so our regression equation, now remember we need to include the actual variables. So it's going to be deseasonalized umbrella sales is equal to A plus BX. So that is 21, now what accuracy? Two decimal places. So 21.88 plus B, two decimal places, is 0 0.92 times, now it's not times x, the x value is the month or season. Use the trend line to predict umbrella sales in January of the following year. Okay, so January of the following year will be month number 13. Okay, so we're going to substitute 13 into our equation. So we've got the deseasonalized sales will be 21.88 plus 0 0.92 times 13. So 21.88 plus 0.92 times 13 
33.84. Now if you used the function definition, you're going to get 33.79. Okay. Um, so slightly different value. I'll work it through in a minute and just check whether your final answer works out to be different. 33.84, I'm going to go with the rounded value. It's the deseasonalized sales. And so that means that the actual sales is going to be the deseasonalized sales, 33.84 multiplied by the seasonal index. And it's the seasonal index for January, uh, which is 1.15. So we're taking out 33.84, sorry, thirty-three point eight four uh, multiplied by 1.15. So that is, now again, the umbrellas, so to the nearest whole number. Um, so 39 umbrellas is what we would predict to sell in January of the following year. Now, just quickly checking if you use your um, function to calculate a more precise deseasonalized sales, um, you still get to the nearest umbrella, 39 umbrellas. So you'll generally find that's what will happen in a test run exam. If you work more precisely, that's fine. It should still um, ultimately round. Um, so if it's easier to work to the rounded equation, so if the question tells you to round your regression equation to two decimal places, you can then use that rounded equation in future calculations. Okay, so the work today is the remainder of exercise 6E. You did the first three questions of 6E earlier in this chapter, um, in this topic, sorry, and now I'm asking you to do questions 4, 5 and 6 where you're going to need to re-seasonalise your answer once you've made the prediction.